Intro to watercolor with Mr. G. All right, today we're going to be starting with watercolor. So we need a light colored crayon. Um, it can be white or yellow. We need our paintbrush that usually comes with our pans. We need a paper towel and of course our paints and these little things on the side is where we can mix our paints if we want to do that. We also need a pencil because we'll be drawing just a little bit today. And the last thing we need with paint with watercolor is water. So first thing I'm going to do is just show you a little bit about watercolors. Usually you get some water onto your brush, you tap it off, and then you choose the color that you're using. Let's go with this uh, purple here. We just kind of swirl it around, get the water in there, and that starts to uh, wet the paint. Now you'll notice when I put the paint down that it's not a real bright color. It's almost translucent or opaque. You can see through it. Um, it's watery, which is one of the reasons why they call it watercolor. It has a very nice um, light effect and you can make a very nice gradient with it. If you move, you'll see the top of the paint is a little bit darker and the bottom of the paint stroke that I put down is lighter. Important thing for me is when you're changing colors to wash your brush out, just like this. And then I like to dab it on the paper towel and then you can choose a new color. One thing I like to do is when I get, when I know that I'm going to be using more than, you know, a couple of brush strokes of color, I like to dab it off to the side there just to kind of save some of that. And I can come back to it. I can also use it for mixing it with other colors. That's why we have those little bubbles over to the side. That's what's really handy about this, this particular set. Some of you might ask, well, how do I get my color to be lighter? And that is a good question. And what I like to do is I like to take some paint, put it off to the side like that, just to add a little bit of extra paint. And then if you add water to your color, you're going to lighten it up. So I'm going to dab a little bit of water here, drop it off, and then put it into that paint right there. And it will dilute it. It'll make it a little bit lighter. And of course, the more water that you add to it, the lighter it'll get. You'll see at the very bottom, it's almost hardly any paint, but there still is color there. You may notice that using blue watercolor like this makes beautiful skies. Another technique that you can use is, I use this for grass or for trees, is um, just kind of this tiny little dabbing. You dip your paint in. I use green at this time. You dip your paint, your brush into the paint and just kind of start tapping around a little bit. Tiny little taps and you can make a uh, beautiful grass because watercolor kind of adds its own shadow and light at the same time, which is really cool. This is another way of just showing how the paint kind of diminishes as you go. It goes lighter and lighter as you have less and less paint on there. It's kind of a neat effect and you can use it for all sorts of different things. You can also make just a little bit longer strokes, whether you want to make bigger grass or maybe just kind of a texture for whatever it is that you're painting. That's another technique that you can use for watercolor. And you can also take your existing paint, if you add some water to it, and wash it out. That's kind of a neat thing that you can do. Drawing a mushroom. Now we're not going to get really technical about how to draw a mushroom because this is all about watercolor. So we're going to make this really simple and just draw kind of a little bit of a hill. This can be a big hill, it can be a little hill. It really doesn't matter. And then just connect the bottom. There's a couple different mushroom examples I'll show you. But now you have kind of the hat of the mushroom and then you just draw the stem. You just put a line down here, kind of curve it out and curve that one out and you have a mushroom. Uh, for the other one, it's kind of like drawing a hill again or maybe like a pillow, top of a pillow. And then again, just drawing the bottom of it. You can make these stems whatever size you want to. You can make them very thick. You can make them very thin because if you've noticed the mushrooms that we looked at, they have both. Now, if you want to take your crayon, you can make these little tiny dots. 
And I'll show you what those are for in just a little while. So you just make little tiny circles all around the mushroom. And then we'll do the other one with maybe a different color like yellow. If you don't have a different color, you can borrow a neighbor's crayon or we might have some extra crayons here too. Just make some fun little dots. And you can use your own imagination, so you can do whatever you want to with that. If you want to have J's on there, or, you know, something like that. So now we'll take our paint. Choose whatever color you want. I'm going to choose red for this one here to go along with some of the red mushrooms that we saw that kind of look like this with the little white dots on them. I'm getting as much paint on my brush as I possibly can. And then I'm dabbing it. And then I'm just going to start on one side and move over. Now look at that. You notice that maybe some of you have already done this before. But it's really cool. Um, professional watercolor artists, they don't use crayons. They use um, masking, this stuff called masking paint. And then you can just rub it off after it's dry. So crayon works just like this. You can use this in any, any form that you want to. You could write your name on the bottom and put watercolor over that if you wanted to. Now I'm just going to choose another color. We'll speed this up too, just so you can watch how it works. Get some ideas for your own. Maybe you're already thinking about your own colors and how big your mushroom's going to be and what size it's going to be. I got to figure out a color for my stems. I like to use probably a light brown for that. So I'm going to go, man, this is kind of a tan. And then just fill that in. I guess there are mushrooms that have completely white stems, but even those stems have some shadow on them. Speaking of shadow, adding a little bit of shadow on the left side here and a little bit underneath the cap of the mushroom. That always gives it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel. That's how we do our mushrooms. All right, for cleanup, I want you to pay attention to this. This is very important. You're going to have some paint over to your side if you used it for mixing. So what I want you to do is take your paper towel and just dab it into each one of those little bubbles. And this way you won't have any water mixing into your other paints and making your other paints kind of nasty and mixed with different colors. So just make sure that they're dried out and you can close it up and you are all set to go. Make sure you take your cups, dump them in the bucket, and then put it back on your tables.